OK, so um, the person who asked the question, now I forgot what you were asking. Um, it was about poison, right? So you want to know if you have a poison table and you want to. Uh, can you repeat your question again? So I can write the numbers. Yes, I was asking when or in which situation do you decide to use a poison where P X is greater than or equals to two, you use, you say it's equals to one minus um, P where X is less than or equals to one. Okay, so let's assume here, um, I'm going to use one of these values. Let's assume here we have lambda of 0 comma 2. So therefore it means we're going to be at this point. And the question is asking you to find the probability that X is greater than or equals to 2. So that is say you need to be finding those probabilities and adding them together which then it means you need to add the probability that X is equals to two plus the probability that X is equals to three plus the probability that X is equals to uh, uh, four plus that plus that plus that, right? In this instance, because there are one, two, three values that you're going to add and you can add them together. You can add all these values like zero comma, zero comma zero one six four plus zero comma zero zero one one plus zero comma zero 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 one plus and you can see that those other ones are that are just zero comma zero 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 they will not make any difference whether you add them onto that right when you add all of these values they will give you six seven one zero so that will give you the probability that x is equals x is greater than or equals to two will be will be um zero comma one seven six alternatively you can say the probability that x is greater than or equals to two is the same as one minus the probability of x less than two because less than two will be the complement of greater than two and in this instance it will be one minus the probability of x is equals to zero plus the probability that x is equals to one because we only going to be adding those two numbers and that will be equals to one minus 0 comma 8187 plus 0 comma 1637 which will be equals to 1 minus what is the answer if we add if anyone calculated 8187 plus and one six three seven, which is equals to zero, zero comma nine seven five four nine. Nine eight two four. Nine eight two four, which will be equals to one minus point nine eight. 4 will be equals to 0, 0,17. Uh, I'm not doing it right. 0 0.755. 0, 0,0174. Which is the same as what we got there. Those are the scenarios that you can use the 1 minus. But you need to know that. Sorry. The complement, sorry. The answer is zero comma zero one seven six. 
I don't know if I've got it right on my side. 176, yes, you got it right. I wrote four instead of six. One minus point nine eight two four is zero comma zero one seven six. Uh, zero point zero one seven nine. Uh -uh. Check if you did write the values right. Uh, you should have zero comma eight one eight seven plus zero comma one six three seven, which should give you zero comma nine eight two four. Seven plus seven, unless you, you are using a table with five decimals. It will also depend on the table that you have in front of you. If you're using the same table as ours with four decimals, then you should get the same answer. Or well, maybe it's my calculator that is rounding off. What kind of a calculator are you using? A sharp. Okay. Is it the financial calculator or a normal calculator? The scientific calculator. Okay. Just check um, your values right there. Okay. So you need to just know that a complement of a greater than or equal is a less than. A complement of a less than is greater than or equal. A complement of less than or equal is greater than. Because the values needs to add up to one. The probabilities. Okay, so then let's look at how we do answer some of the question, unless if you do have other questions that you have for me. Uh, Lizzie, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was an exercise that I uh, watched one of your um, recordings and then um there was okay it was given that x was equals to zero and lambda was um equals to 0 0.2 so it definitely is a multiple um uh, sorry yeah so the answers um the three answers were wrong and the fourth answer was um e to the to the power of negative 0 0.2 and then the fourth, the, sorry, the fifth answer was none of the above. So as I watched, um, you you ended up saying the answer is none of the above. But when I was using the um, the formula, substituting everything, um, maybe I might be wrong, um, but I saw that um, all that like um, the lambda to the exponent zero, and then um, and the x, um, yeah, the, like the answer was actually e to the exponent 0 0.2. So I was confused between the two. Okay. I don't know if you, you understand. I'm going to go to that question. Um, okay. It was on the recording, right? Yes, yeah. So this is a session. Wait, sorry. I I think I would have overrated the session of today. Mm. I did. Oh gosh, I will okay. open it from from a PowerPoint slide because I I overrated okay. the, the presentation. Yeah. Today's session. Uh, so I know which one you're referring to. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that question. Wait. But if you look at this, no, 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 there's no none of the mm. above, right? And there is no negative number here, right? Can you see that? Oh, oh okay. Mm. But that one, it negative number. I think that one did have. Okay, maybe I'm I'm confusing the two, but that one did have a a, a negative yeah, exponent, I, and then then I can look at the other negative ex then the other ones that had a formula. That would be the only question that had a formula in. Um, mm, okay. But but and also it's fine this, if it's gonna this delay. I you can find the the answer for it. Um, yeah, I remember this one is this so one we did find this answer. one as well. So that in this one, one yes, I remember. Had, was that one which I I think I would have uh, also said, uh, probably there would mm -hmm. have been a none of the above answer somewhere there. Oh okay. Um, okay. Then no it's other 
because this should have been a negative zero. A negative, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. No, thank you, Liz. No worries. Um, okay, so if there are no other questions, I do have other additional questions that we can go through um, in the last whatever minutes that are left. Are there any other questions? Uh, yes, one yes. of the uh, questions on the uh, uh, on assignment two feature uh, requires us to have a poison table where we have a ten point five, but the two poison tables I was able to find do not have that value. The poison table expect you to have a uh, a ten point five value. A 10.5 value. Did they include 10.5? Like they gave you a, an average of 10.5? It's very difficult to to understand how would have how would the question would have been stated. Um, if I don't know, um, yes, I, I wrote it down. I don't know if I can read it. Okay, can you read the question out, or you um, can type it on the chat? It's always easier that way as well. Um, it's always easier to have all the information because then if you just give me one one number, it might be that they gave you something else and they expect you to use that number to calculate something so that you can get another value. But the table ends, in this instance, ends at 10 and then they give you the 20. Number of 20, so there is nothing in between. Um, they wouldn't expect you to use the values that are not part of the table unless in your prescribed book your table goes beyond 10. Are you still typing? While we're waiting for that question yes. to be popped yes, into the chat. Yes, I'm still typing. I'm using a phone. I'll type uh, it now. If, if you wrote it down on a piece of paper, you can take a screenshot of it and, and upload it um, and attach it. There is a thing to attach a picture and then we will have a picture on here. I can have access to it or otherwise you can post it on the WhatsApp and then I will have access to it. OK. While we waiting for that, uh, let's uh, look at some of the questions that I have on here. Do you have a question? Yes, ma'am, I also have a question. Yes. I'm trying, I'm using a sharp calculator and I'm trying to do the Poisson formula, but I don't get the right answer. So I don't know if it's the, I don't know how, because even if I type in all like the questions that we did previously, I'm not like able to get the correct answer. Sometimes okay. it's right error. All right, so you're using what kind of a calculator? A sharp calculator, what type? It's a scientific one. A scientific calculator, but scientific calculators are also written like different, right? Uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'll just open one of the sharp cal um, the sharp calculator. Uh, depending, do you have the one where there are values written in green, right? Everywhere. 
Uh, no, some of them, they are written in orange. Yeah, but I mean, like, you do have the one where the mean, there is the mean, the median written in green on number four, number five. Yes. Okay. Because there are different types of sharp calculators. So that is why I need to make sure that I understand the type of calculator you have. So you have a calculator that looks like this, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go to our question that we just answered not so long ago. It was... was on here yeah. you talking about not knowing how to answer some of these questions so i'm just going to use yes. the values that we are familiar with which are these values that we have here you can see if i want to calculate let's assume now i'm going to remove all this let's assume that we want to calculate the probability that x is equals to one and our lambda is zero comma 0, 0,2, right? And you want to use your formula. So your formula will state the probability that x is equals to 1 is equals to e to the power of lambda, lambda to the power of x divided by x factorial. Divide by x factorial and now we can just substitute our values e to the power of lambda our lambda is minus 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 to the power of x is 1 divided by 1 factorial our answer that we are expecting should be this answer that we have here so let's go to our calculator I've got so many other calculators open here. I hope I open the right one. So we can first calculate e to the power of negative 2. So where do you find your e to the power of negative 2? It's on the lean button. You will see that there is a button written e to the power of x is written in orange, right? It's like this. e to the yes. power of x is written in orange. So therefore, it means we're going to have to press the second function so in order for us to write this e to the power of negative 0 comma 2 we will have to press the second function so second function then will give us this on our on your calculator it should look like that and you will need to yes. press the plus or minus button so that you put this negative number on the on the question, this negative number by pressing the plus or minus, not the min not the minus of the basic operation, not this minus here. You're going to press okay. the plus or minus button, which will be the negative, and then press point two. And if you press equal, it will give you the answer like this. That is not the end because yes. we're multiplying with this value there. And then you just say multiply by, what are we multiplying? 0 0.2, I will put it in the bracket because I need to raise it. Or you don't have to put it in the bracket, 0 0.2, and raise it to the power. And your power, if you look at your calculator, you, this one will give you the power and then you just press that button and it will raise it to the power of one, right? That is one. Raise it to the power of one and press equal. I always like to press an equal sign because I need to make sure that it's doing the calculations right as well. And the last part of it, of the calculation is to divide by one factorial. And then I say divide by, and then you press one. And the factorial is on button number four. It's written in orange. And then I will press second function four. And it will create one factorial. And I press equal. And as you can see, the answer that we got is the same as 
what we expected, 0, 0,1637. You just need to know how to use your calculator and practice with you. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Any other question? Okay, I have posted the question on the chat. You posted the question on the chat. I need to check first the way is it. Okay, so consider a Poisson distribution with the expected number of occurrence per interval equals to 10.5. Calculate the probability that the number of occurrence per interval is equals to 11. Now, because my tables don't have 10.5, I need to go and find the prescribed book to see if in the prescribed book there is a table with 10.5. Just give me a second. Okay, thank you for your patience. I am trying to find the table in the prescribed book. Um, yeah. Even in the prescribed book, they don't have the poison. How come? Wait. You see, I have appendix B. of the tables. Then I wouldn't know why your lecturer will give you a 10.5. Probably they would expect you to, to use the online calculators. So they should give you values corresponding to the tables. Otherwise, they expect you to calculate it manually. So you need to go and use your calculators and the formula as well so i will write the the values here so the question is okay where lambda is 10.5 and what did they say uh exactly 11 so exactly 11 is equals to so we need to find the probability that x is exactly which will mean is equals to 11. so you will just Use your formula, e to the power negative lambda, lambda to the power of x, divide by x. So you'll just substitute the values. e to the power of lambda will be minus 10.5, 10.5 to the power of your x is 11, divide by 11 factorial and you will find your answer. I cannot give you the answer because the question is from your exam paper for your assignment. So that's how you would answer the question. Um, and that is why it's very important to know how to use your formulas because some of the questions might not require you to use the table. 
um, you might need to calculate things manually. Okay. So you okay. should be able to answer that question. If you get a question like that, where the table does not have all the information, right? Is there other questions? Are there any other questions? Yes, Lizzie. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm referring to your notes that you've been giving us on study unit four. Mm -hmm. You open that. I need help with exercise seven. Study unit four. Um, is it is it on the notes? Notes, notes, like yes, summary notes. Did it say yes. summary notes? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's saying session three. Yeah. Sometimes sharing like this way. Let me stop sharing and then navigate directly to where the things are. Otherwise, you guys are seeing my computer. Um, summary notes. Um, and it is question number seven. Question seven. Yes. On the summary notes, did it? Did the title say summary notes? No, study unit four, session three, basic probability. Okay, so then it's not summer. It's not the summary notes. It is the one that we used in the in the session on a Sunday. Okay. Okay. Because then they are different. Uh, okay. And you say it is question seven. Question seven. Okay, so let's look at question seven. I hope that is the one that you are referring to. Is it the, is it the one? That's the one. Okay, so on question seven, there are multiple things that they give you here. If the probability of A is 0 0.4, the probability of B is 0 0.3, the probability of C is 0 0.5. The probability of A and B is 0, 0,12, and the probability of B and C is equals to zero. Then A, B and C are independent. B, A and B are mutually exclusive. C, A and C are impossible events. Um, D, A and B are dependent, E, A and B are independent. Which one of the following statements are correct? Now, you need to take each and every one of them and evaluate the statement and see if they are correct. So let's start with the easy one. The easy one is B. B says, a and B are mutually exclusive. Are they mutually exclusive? Because if they are mutually exclusive, the joint probability of A and B should be equals to zero, zero. right? So is yes. A and B mutually exclusive? No. 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 So we can cross that one out. Um, the others, I cannot test them unless if I do some calculations. So, mm -hmm. Statement number one, A says B and C are independent. When do two events are independent? We can test it by saying the probability of B given C will be the same as the probability of B. Of B. Or we can say the probability of C given B is the same as the probability of B. So how do we test that? What is the probability of B? Probability of B is 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3. What is the probability of B given C? So let's test that. The probability of B given C can be given by the probability of B and C divided by the probability of C. 
what is the probability of B and C? And it's zero. It's zero. Divide by the probability of C, which is zero comma five, which therefore it equals to zero. Therefore, this side is zero comma zero. Are they equal? No, they are not. So, is event B and C independent? No, they are not. Uh, number D, I'm going to skip number, number C because C says A and C are impossible events. Yes. Actually, let's not skip them. Are they impossible events? Yes, they are. Ah, is A and C impossible events? If A is an impossible event, then the probability of A would be equals to zero. If C is an impossible event, then the probability of it will be zero. Is the, are they impossible events? No, they are not impossible events because the probability of A is 0 0.4 and the probability of C is 0 0.5. So therefore, A and C are not impossible events. They didn't give us that they are joined somewhere, but we know yeah. that they are not impossible events because they are equals to that. So they are not equals to zero. They are not equals to zero. So therefore, they are possible events. So not impossible. They are possible events. Um, let's. I'm going to skip A and B and A and B independent and dependent. We're going to do them together because if one is not dependent, therefore it means it's independent. So let's look at E says the A and B are independent. We know that if they are independent, the probability of A given B should be the same as the probability of A or we can use the probability of B given A should be the same as the probability of A, of B. Um, so what is the probability of A? It's easy to find that one. 0, 0,4. It's 0, 0,4. What is the probability of A given B? They haven't given it to us, so we can calculate that. So let's calculate it and see. The probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. What is the probability of A and B? Um, 0, 0,12. 0, 0,12. What is the probability of B? It's 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3. And what is the answer? 0, 0,4. 0, 0,4. Therefore, it's 0, 0,4. So is A and B independent? They are yes. independent. Are they dependent? No, they are no. not. Because if they were not independent, then they would be dependent. Which one of the following statement is correct? So it's going to be five. Only E. Only, only E. And that's how easy it is to answer the probability question. Are there any other questions? Or can I use? the question that I have. Today it's Q&A. Based on the things that you don't understand, let us help you understand them better. Nothing. Okay, so I'll do spot checks in terms of questions that I'm going to pick on as we go along. So remember this, right? You must always, always remember when you do discrete probabilities, binomial probabilities, and Poisson distribution probabilities. The word phrases corresponding to the symbols. Meaning, uh, if you interpret the symbol, what do they mean? You need to always remember that. So let's look at this one question. So this question says, consider two events that a primary caregiver had to go through during lockdown, working from home and secure environment. 
And working from home is represented by H, and secure environment is represented by S. So they could have just it's said, Hi, Lizzie, I can't see the question. It's not oh, showing. You can't see the question. Oh, yeah, I didn't share my screen. Are you sure? I, I could see the previous question now. I don't see anything. Yes. And now? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that could have just said, uh, consider the two events that primary caregiver had to go through during lockdown, working from home and secure environment. They could have said A and B if they wanted to, but they, let's say they use the words themselves. So H and S are our two events. They give us the probability that H is 0 0.53 and the probability of S, which is secure environment, is 0, 0.56. And they also tell us that the probability of H and S is 0 0.38. To answer questions like this, if they give you the probabilities and they don't give you in the table, you can, you can create a contingency table so that you are able to answer the question with ease. Like I said, they could have just given it to us as A and B because if it's A, and that will be A complement. If it's B, that will be B, B complement. You can write them like that. So because they gave us the letters to use, we can use our letters. So they said it's home and home complement. And we have secure and secure complement. Maybe, but they're also telling us some information because we know that secure and um, home and secure is 0 0.38, 0 0.38. We can put it there. And the probability of, sec of home, regardless of whether it's secure or not secure, is 0 0.53, 0 0.53. And the probability of secure, regardless of whether it is, uh, and this is where you put your totals, right? And this is where you put your totals. And that will be 0 0.56, 0 0.56. You can take the information and create your own contingency table. And now I can calculate all the other measures that are left on there because these are probabilities. This should be equals to one. Therefore, here will be 0 0.47 and here will be 0, 4. And here will be 0, 0,81. And here will be 0, comma. This one is the tricky one. Uh, what we, is it? We, it's 0, 0,15. 15. Oh, there we go. And here. 0, 0,29. 0, 0, Two, nine. As you can see, I've completed my table. I can answer any question that I need to answer from here. So the first question, we're looking for the Sorry, correct answer. Get 0 0.18. 0 0.18. Where? For H complement. H complement and what? This. I already have 0 0.18 for H complement and secure. Are you referring to the same? Yes. Mm. Okay, so now we can answer the, the question. So the probability that H or S, you need to go back to the formula. Remember the formula? The probability of A or B is given by the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, right? So we can write it in the same in the same manner using H and S. So here we need to find the probability of H plus the probability of S minus the probability of H and S. Our probability of H they gave us is 0 0.53. 
plus the probability of x is 0, 0,56. 0, 0,56 minus the probability of the joint probability of H and S is 0, 0, Let's calculate. What is the answer? Zero comma one. Zero comma seven one. Seven one. So therefore, this is not correct. We're looking for the correct one. If event H and S are independent, so they are telling us if they are independent, what do we know when events are independent? If event H and S are independent, then the probability of H and S should be equal to the probability of 0, 0,6. So we know that the probability of H and S should be the same as the probability of H. What is the probability of H? 0, 0,53. 0, 0,53. So therefore, they are not independent because this should be the same as that and they're telling us it's 0, 0,56 so that is not correct and that's how you're going to check because they told you that they are independent therefore it means if they are independent then the probability of h and s should be the same as the probability of h but the probability of h is 0, 0.53 so then they are not it's not correct it should be 0, 0.53 there if S complement, oh, if S with the C guppy is the complement of S, then the probability of S complement is equals to 0 0.47. So we, we've calculated all of them here. So what is the probability of S complement? We find it here at the end. 0 .4. It's 0 0.44. 0.44. This should be, it's not correct. It should be 0, 0,44. So that is incorrect. If H complement, oh, if H with the guppy is a complement of, oh, not S. This is my mistake here. Yeah? It should say of H. Then the probability of H complement, H complement is 0, 0,47. So this should be. Yes, gonna. No, I can't change it. My bet. So, but this is zero comma four seven. So, therefore, that is the correct answer that they are looking for. Uh, event H and S are mutually exclusive. H and S, and they gave it to us. There are they mutually exclusive? No. No, they are not mutually exclusive because they are equal to 0 0.38 and the only answer they would have been number four and that's how you will answer some of these questions um sometimes they will give it to you in a uh in a, a question like this as you can see from here i've got a table uh with home and away and they told me that h is home s is secure environment so the complement is insecure. Um, the uh, complement of home is away, and you can answer the question relating to this. And here they are asking you to find the, to find out whether secure and insecure are complements of one another. Um, events that home and secure are independent. Therefore, it means you will need to prove that the probability of home given secure is the same as the probability of all and if not then they are not independent the probability that home and away are mutually exclusive you need to go and um, uh, test whether the probability of home and away is it away i'm gonna use away as a i'll, I'll use the first letter to represent since the, here they use the first letter to represent home and away, away is H. Are they equals to zero? If they are equals to zero, then they are mutually exclusive. Remember, you're looking for the incorrect answer, right? 
uh, the event home and insecure are not independent. You're going to find whether the probability home given insecure should be the same as the probability of home or should not should not be the same as the probability of home therefore they will not be independent so let's check let's test that let's test all that um you need to complete the entire table if we want to use some of this values so yeah it will be that it's no longer writing pardon are you aware that it's no longer writing is it no longer writing or no longer showing on your side no longer showing on our side. And sorry, Lizzie, um, I'll take you back. I didn't, I asked about the 0 0.18, but I didn't get there. You say that you were given. So now I see it on question two, but. No, 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 you were not given. Remember, I put all the things that you were given. It was the 0 0.38, 0 0.53, and 0 0.56. We completed the entire table. This oh, was not I even. still didn't get how you calculated the 0 0.18, sorry. Oh, we take 0 0.56, subtract 0 0.38, it will give you 0 0.18. Okay, thank you. No worries. So here we add, uh, I'm going to use the same 5347, 0 0.53, 0 0.47, and here would have been 0. 5, 6 and 0 0.44. Yeah, I'm just, they are just vice versa from the table that I was using. So how do we answer this question? Easy. Um, oh, comp uh, complement event, it means it's another event that is part of the sample space and is not included in that. So secure and insecure are these two events. So it means Secure is a complement of insecure. Insecure is a complement of secure. We know that. So if this was S, this would be S complement. Or oh, if this was I, if this was I, this will be I complement. Something like that. Because one of they are in the they are a complement of one another. So this one is right, correct. But we're looking for the incorrect one. The event home and secure are independent. So we need to prove this. What is the probability of home? Probability of home is 0 0.35. So we know that probability of home is 0. Point, probability of home is 0 0.53. What is the probability of home given secure? that we need to calculate. Home given secure, we calculate it by using the joint probability of home. Always remember that home, the joint probability of home and secure divide by the probability of home. So the probability of home and secure, home and secure is 38, 0 0.38 divide by the probability of home, home is 53, 0 0.53. What is that probability? 0, 0,72. 0, 0,72. So therefore, this is the incorrect one because they are not the same. The probability of home and away are mutually exclusive. Those two are complement events. So the probability of a comp of complement event, they cannot happen at the same time. So somebody cannot be home and also be away at the same time. So that will be correct. Now the last one is asking, because then the probability of home and away will be equals to zero there with the number C. The D, the event home and insecure are not independent. So yeah, we need to solve for something. We need to prove that they are not equal. So let's prove that. So probability of O, probability of O, we know that it was 0 0.53. Let's see if the probability of home given 
insecure, which will be the probability of a joint home and insecure divided by the probability of the given, which is the insecure. The probability of home and insecure is 0 0.15. The probability of insecure, regardless of whether they are home or not, is 0 0.44. Zero comma three four. Three four. Yes. Zero zero comma three four. They are not independent because they are not equal. That one was zero comma five three. This one is zero comma four three. So that is correct. So the only question that is incorrect is B. Um, I hope you do understand how you're going to answer the questions. So sometimes you will not be given only the table with two. You might be given the table with three categories or four categories, maybe home, away, and on holiday, or something like that. You still need to be able to calculate the probabilities based on that. Okay. And sometimes the questions might look like this. Uh, an experiment can result in one or four likely events that can happen, and these are the events that can happen. And they say let A be event where event one and three happens. And we know how you can calculate the probability of A because there are two outcomes out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is two out of seven. You can calculate the probability of that, but there are not seven. Sorry, there are four. Two out of four. Um, my bad. I counted this event you should count these events there are four of them uh this there are only two two divided by four gives you 0 0.5 three divided by four gives you seven zero comma seven five two divided by four will give you zero comma two for event c as well so based on those events they ask you which one of the following event their statement is incorrect you need to use the A's and the B's to answer the question. So A and B are independent. How do you prove that A and B are independent? The probability of A given B will be equal to the probability of A. Now, the challenge you will have here is that they haven't given you a and B, but you can calculate A and B. Are they A and B on this event? How many events falls within A and fall in B? So if I have a circle here and a circle here, and this is A and this is B, in A we have E1, and E3. In B, we have E1, E2, and E3. Can you see that? I'm able to create A and B. A and B probability will be given by 2 divided by 4, which is 0 0.5. So I do have my probability of A and B because it's 2 divided by 4. Now, let's find out if A and B are independent. So we know that the probability of A is 0 0.5. The probability of A and B, let's go find that. The probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B, right? The probability of A and B, we did find it because we were able to calculate it is 0 0.5 divided by the probability of B, which is 0 0.75. What is the probability of A given B? Zero comma six seven. 0 0.67. 
zero comma six seven. So they are not equal, so therefore they are not independent. We're looking for the correct answer. The probability of A or B is equals to one. So let's go yes. find out because here we can find the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Lizzie, before you continue, sorry, can I take you back? Yes. Um, so without doing those circles that you did up there to get the probability of A and B, how else uh, can we get it? Because you can look at the values that they both okay. are in both. You can just oh. do this. There are two values that are in both A and B. So that's the only way you can find that. OK, so the probability of A is 0 0.5, which was given, plus the probability of B, 0 0.75, minus the joint probability of 0 0.5, which is equals to 0 0.75. Zero point seven five because zero point five and zero point five will cancel out. You will be left with zero point seven five, so that will be will not be the correct answer. The probability of A and B is equal to zero point two five. B and C. B and C. So we now move to B and C. Let's not use the Venn diagram. So how many values are in B and are also in C? There's only, only one, right? Oops. So one divide one divide by four. Zero comma two five. Zero comma two five. So this will be one divide by four, which is zero comma two five, which is the value that they are looking for. The probability of A given B, we did calculate that. We did find it. The probability of A given B, we did it's zero comma six seven. So this will be incorrect. A and B are mutually exclusive. We did find that they are 0, 0,25, so that won't be correct. And that's how you will answer the questions. Okay, so we spent more time on the probabilities of A's and B's and basic probabilities. So you can also find more exercises to do. Um, this is, yeah. When you go and answer questions relating to binomial, because they are all asked in the same question paper, binomial, poison, all those things. When you read the question and you are given a percentage and you are also given a number, then you need to know that you're doing a binomial. If they didn't mention that this is a binomial probability, you need to know and remember that, that you are given an N and you are given the probability of success. Right? And to calculate the average, you still remember that the expected mean of a binomial is n times pi. So here will be 20 times 0 0.35, which is equals to 7. Seven. Sorry, which is equals to seven. We're looking for the incorrect statement, right? The probability that at most, you always need to remember that at most means the probability of X less than or equals to one. And therefore you will need to find the probability of X equals to zero. plus the probability that x equals to 1. And you need to go to the table. Oh, I need to share my entire screen, right? In order for you to be able to see the table. Have you gotten the number, the answers. So this is 
binomial. So you need to go to the binomial table. And on my binomial tables, my binomial tables are, I need to rotate them. Okay, this one I need to rotate it the other way around. So we know that we're looking for 0 0.35 and n of 20. Okay, so one, two, how many columns? One, two, three, four four columns this is 10 n of 20 is this one I'll rotate and need to rotate it anti-clockwise so 0 0.35 n of 20 x of 2 or 3 so we're looking for those two values is 0 0.002 plus 0 0.0020. 0 0.0002 plus 0 0.0020, which is equal to 0 0.0022, which means that is correct. That is correct. We're still looking for the incorrect one. The probability that only one branch, which means we're looking for x is equals to one. What is the probability of x is equals to one? We're still on 0 0.35. The probability that x is equals to one is? Um, 0, 0.0020. 0, 0, 0, 0, which means? That is correct. The average number of branches closed. So we're still looking for the average. We calculated it previously. And yeah, it says it's 19 so that we know that it's seven. It cannot be 19 if we calculated it to be seven. And the probability that at least one, so the probability that X is greater than or equals to one, you can find this by saying one minus the probability of X is less than one, does not include one, right? So that will be one minus the probability that X is equals to zero, which is one minus the probability of 0, 0,0002, .0 which is 0, 0,0000, 0, 0,99998, yes. And that's how you will answer some of these questions. Uh, we can go on until Godatu. I just want to go to the poison and the discrete. Let's look at the discrete. Remember with the discrete, the table can be like this or they can put it like this. PY. So this is Y, right? They can put it like this. It's one and the same thing. So it can look like the way it is horizontally or they can put it vertically where it will still, the table will still have the same values, whether it's it's like horizontal or vertical, and so on and so on, right? They will mean, it means one and the same thing. So you need to take the table as you see it and answer the question as they ask you. But before you do, if the question has a question mark, so you can see that here we have a question mark, you need to first calculate this question mark by saying one minus all these other values, the sum of all the other values. How much is it? What is number two? Probability of number two will be one minus, you can just minus all the values, 0 0.009 minus 0 0.376 minus, 0.167 minus 0 0.06 uh, 0.06 minus 0 0.016 and the answer will be 0 0.371. Are we on the same page? Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. 
and then you are able to answer any of these questions. So the probability that y is equals to 2, it means you were calculating that value. There it says it's equals to 0. No. And that's what you are looking for, but that is incorrect. The probability that it's between, this is inclusive. So when it says inclusive, remember to include 0 and 5. So it's all of them. What do we know? The sum of all probabilities should be equals to 1. one. So this one. should be correct. The probability that y is greater than 1, so it does not include 1. So it's all the values from here going there. So you just add from 0. Point, so you can add all of them, or you can say 1 minus those two values, or you need to add all four of these values. 1 minus 0. 0.009 minus 0. 0.376 is 0, 0.615. Or you can say 0. 0.371 plus 0. 0.167 plus 0. 0.061 plus 0. 0.016. It should give you the same. Six, uh, 0 0.615, which is correct. The probability that y is less than 2, less than 2 or equals to 2, so it includes 2. As long as there is an equality sign to it, therefore it means it includes 2, so you count from here to there. So you just add 0 0.615 plus 0 0.371, and it should give you 0 0.756. And it should give you 0 0.75 because 0 0.09 and 0 0.376 gives us 0 0.615 plus 0 comma then give us 0 comma 0.756. And the other one says between but does not include 0 and 5. So it means you only interested in one up until four. So you just add those two, or you can say one minus zero and five, and that will give you the answer you're looking for. Or you can add all four of them. One minus 0 0.009, I always take shortcuts, minus 0 0.016, but you need to know what you are doing when you take shortcuts and the number is my uh, it's 0, 0.975. So shortcut it means you take that one minus those two values outside. And that is your discrete probabilities. You will find questions that looks almost like that. Otherwise, then they will give you questions where they ask you find the expected value. What you need to remember, regardless of what they're asking you to calculate or find, what is the expected value? The expected value is is the mean average and parameter is the average. Whether it's if it was for Poisson, then the, it will also refer to the variance. So that is the expected value. It's the expected value, or we can also call it the expected, the expected value, or we can call it the mean, we can call it the average. It's the mean value, the average, they mean one and the same thing. So if in the exam or your assignment they ask you what is the expected value, you know the answer to the question. It's as easy as that. You can't even do any calculation except if it is a poison. You need to know that it also the same as the variance. And if they ask you for the expected value of an, a, a poison, that's easy to calculate or to find because you don't even need to calculate anything. Um, remember also, you need to be able to know how to use your formulas. So for example, this Autism South Africa have found out that one out of two people 
with autism struggles from social interaction. I assume we randomly select six people living with autism. What is the probability that only three people with? And now here, all of a sudden, you are not given the percentages or something like that. Do not panic. They gave you all the information you need. You can calculate your pi by using one out of two. It means one divided by two, which will give you 0 0.5, which is your probability of success of that people living with autism. And then what else are you given? You given N and you are given your X of only three people, which is three. All they want you to do is to calculate the probability. But if you look at the answers, this is not something that you can go and calculate. It's something that you need to use in the formula and calculate certain things and leave out certain things. So what do we know? We know that the probability of X is equals to your, um, I'm going to use NCR in this instance, NCR and pi to the power of X, one minus pi to the power of N minus X, or you can use the formula. So depending on which one you feel comfortable with, X is equals to, um, uh, how do we do this? Is it N, uh, N factor? Uh, I'm not going to use that other formula because now I need to go and memorize what that formula looks like. The formula I'm just going to show you is do we have formulas on this? Nope, we don't have formulas, but you know what formulas are there to use anyway. So I'm going to use NCR because then my N is 6, my R will be 3, because here I'm calculating the probability that X is equal to 3. So therefore, my pi, I did find it, is 0, 0,5 to the power X, X is 3. 1 minus 0, 0,5, n is 6 minus x, x is 3, and you just calculate what is NCR. Remember, you use your calculator. So let's say those who are using the sharp calculator, uh, your NCR, where is it? Uh, oh, it's written in orange. There it is. So you just press six, second function, NCR, and then three, and press equal, and that is equals to 20. And that is my answer. And looking at this, so the second part of the equation, I do not have to do anything. I can just say multiply because my bracket means the same thing as multiply 0, 0,5 to the power of three and multiply by 1 minus 0, 0,5 is 0, 0,5. 6 minus 3 is 3, and I look for the right answer, and the right answer is that one. And that's how easy and simple it is to just answer the questions. And, and I think we're going to go over that time, because now I want to go to the poison, but we did poison so, so much, so we are right on time in terms of Goddard. Um, and this one, gives you 41%, so we know that this is the pi. Six students is our n, and uh, sorry, not six is our n. I'm giving you wrong things. Six is our n, and here they say at least half of the six. So you need to also think outside of the box. What is half of six? Half of six is three. So therefore, our x of at least means greater than or equals to three. So we need to find the probability that X is greater than or equals to six. And in this instance, I will say, go and use the table because the challenge with the table is we don't have 41%. Let's go there. Uh, are you able to see the table? 
as I scroll. We have, we have 40. Yes. And then you have 45. Can you see that? Therefore, it means in order for you to answer this question, you will have to calculate it manually. Um, and because there are six, so, and we know with poison, let's go back to poison, N corresponds to the number of Ns. So it's easy. So this will be the probability that X is equals to three plus the probability that X is equals to four plus the probability that X is equals to five plus the probability that X is equals to six. It will stop right there. Or remember, this is the probability of the probability of x greater than or equals to 3, you can say it's 1 minus the probability of x less than 3, which means you only need to add very few of them. The probability that x is equals to 0 plus the probability that x is equals to 1. Oh, sorry. 1 plus the probability that x is equals to two you just need to add all three of them instead of adding four depending on you how you want to do it so that's how you will answer the question so based on either one of them you will get the same answer i'm not gonna do that because i'm just giving you um in terms of the poison they will give you the average you just need to remember that this is your lambda and they say at least four therefore you're going to find the probability of greater than or equals to for now with the lambdas it depends because if i go to the lambda table and the lambda says 1.5 and you can see that it ends on nine so if the question was the probability that at least four so therefore at least four it means i must add all this so it means i must add all of them or you can do only those ones. It depends on you. I will just add this because there are one, two, three, four, and also yeah, one, two, three, four is still the effort is still the same. <clears throat> uh, there are five, but I mean the values are very fairly small, <clears throat> so the effort will still be the same. So you 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 make up your mind as you go along in terms of which one will be easier to calculate, whether to add and subtract one or from one or to just add all of them. So that's how you will answer the question because that is greater than or equals. Uh, this one as well is a day or more, two or more. So two or more is like the probability of X is equals to two or more, two or more. Um, I'm not going to go into details in this one. At most, that uh, that means exactly, that means exactly. So you just use the equal, equal, equal everywhere you you calculate. And this says um, the estimated value. So the estimated value is the same as the average. So you just go to the average of lambda of 20. So remember, 20 on this one is the last one. It will be this table with the 20, but the X values will be different for the 20 as well. And then they're asking you about the variance. Remember, this is poison. So they also did say it, it's poison. The average, the variance is the same as the lambda. If my lambda is 20, therefore this is also 20. Oh, and what is the mean? What is the mean? The mean, if my lambda, my average is 20, therefore it means my mean is also, and then the others you need to calculate. And those are, yeah, those are some of the questions I just uh, put together as well for you to go through. But practice, 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 practice. It's very important. Um, it's very, very, very important. So what happens? Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. What happens when you have an average of 1.2? Let's go to 1.2. 1.2. And 
if you are sitting on 1.2, let's let's assume that we are here on 1.2, and they ask you find the probability that x is less than or equals to 12. Find the probability that x is less than or equal to 12. There is no 12 here, but because of the question, the way it's formulated, it says less than or equals to 12. It means it's all these values, including if the imaginary ones that were not there. So we know that the table ends at nine, so it's adding all of them, and we know that the sum, the sum of all probabilities where lambda is equals to one, that or 1.2 that will be equal to one because if i add all of them they should give me one um that you should always be aware of but if they ask you what is the probability that it's greater than or equals to 12 greater than or equals to 12 there is no 12 here so that will be just be equals to zero because it doesn't exist it's an impossible event that can occur but if it says less than or equal, you can just add all of them. Even if 12 is not part of the table, if they say on this one, they say 13, 13 is not part of the table, but if it's less than or equal, so it means adding all of the values up. Um, and you just need to remember to do that. So I'm looking at this one where it says uh, 10, but we are on 1.4. But I'm just giving you some example as well. OK, so I will upload this uh, note after I made those uh, small corrections that I needed to do on one of the slides. And that concludes today's session. I hope you should be able, though, especially those who haven't done at least one submission, you are able to do your first submission. Um, Remember to look at all the all all the recordings that we did on a Sunday. They should give you at least more or less some ideas in terms of how you can tackle or answer your questions in your assignment. I wish you all the best and I will see you in July, but I'm always available on uh, on WhatsApp throughout. Um, to support you and assist you with anything you want. Remember, if there is any question that you struggled with uh, and you want to um, discuss with me during, um, don't take screenshots, just uh, remember, write down and share so that we, 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 we stay uh, in the bounds of what you can do and not do in terms of what is allowed and what not allowed. So remember that always, right? Um, not that I'm going to give you your answers, but I will gladly steer you in the right direction in terms of how you tackle some of these questions. Other than that, have a blessed Sunday. I will see you in July. Enjoy. Thank okay. you. Bye. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Thank you.